Good morning, Rose Red Homestead. This will be our very first video, uh, baking a loaf of bread with uh, my new, fairly new bread maker, my Cuisinart bread maker. And so this for us goes to self-reliance, food security, and emergency preparedness. At some point, um, when I get a little bit farther down the line in my experimentation with the bread machine, I am going to try it out with my Blue Eddy to see if it will um, power the Cuisinart through an entire program. So that's coming down the line. Today we're going to be doing French bread. And as, in addition to the fact that the bread machine is uh, new for us in showing how to bake bread, I'm going to show two other things too that I have learned in my research on baking bread. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show on camera for the first time how to fold dough into a torpedo loaf. Torpedo loaf meaning um, a hump on the center and then tapered to sort of points on the ends. So I'm going to show that. And then, because we want a really beautiful, um, crispy, crusty crust, we're going to do an experiment with getting steam into the oven. Usually I can easily get that type of a crust when I do bread as a boule, a round ball, in a Dutch oven inside my oven because the Dutch oven traps the steam escaping from the dough as it bakes. And as you may know, commercial bakers always use ovens with steam injection. And so it is that steam that gives us that lovely crust. Well, we're going to try to generate that steam with a um, technique that I read about but have not tried. And that is right here. I have this little uh, foil pan filled with very porous lava rock. And Jim and I just picked up a bag of lava rock, um, the same type of lava rock that you would put in your grill as replacement. It was like under $5 at the hardware store, and it filled two of these pans. I'm debating about whether to use one or two. And so we will preheat this along with the oven dry. And then when we get ready to put the bread in, I'm going to pour some boiling water over these very porous rocks the, the porosity of the rocks really increases the surface area where um, water can um, find its way into the little tiny holes and then there will be more steam generation. So this is the first time to try that as well. So our recipe for the day is very simple. It's the one that is directly out of my recipe book. It is flour, water, salt, and yeast, period. That is it. And so we're going to get started right now. So first of all, I'm just going to open up the machine. And I'm going to pull out the pan. And um, as you know, the pan, if you watched our review that uh, was on Micro Moment Monday this week, the pan has that paddle in the bottom. And that paddle is responsible for the mixing and the kneading. And we will show uh, some of that as we go today. today. It is one and a fourth cups of room temperature water. And it is important that we put ingredients in in the order that they are listed in the recipe. And then next I'm putting in a teaspoon and a half of salt. The next ingredient called for is flour. And I need 468 grams of flour, which is three and a fourth cups. So I'm now going to turn my scale on. And it is zeroed out. So I need 468 grams of all-purpose flour. And it makes it so easy to measure when I'm working on a scale. There we have it. And then in the top of the flour, I just make a little well, and I'm going to put in one and a fourth teaspoons of the yeast. Then I'm just going to put this right back. Make sure it is locked in place. And 
I'm going to select just the dough cycle. I don't want it to go all the way through to the end because I'm going to pull the dough out um, at the end of the dough cycle and then I'm going to shape it myself and we're going to bake it in the oven. Selecting the program, which is eight, dough only. So it's going to take an hour and a half for it to go through the entire cycle. I don't need to select the color. I, I, I can select the size. Nope, don't need to select the size. So the next thing I need to do is just press start. And that begins the mixing action. And there you can see it has started to mix. We are going to let it finish mixing. And then when it comes to the kneading segment, we'll bring you back so that you can see the kneading action inside. And then it will do one rise. And at the end of that rise, that is when the cycle ends and we'll take it out and uh, finish shaping it into a torpedo shape and then get it ready for the final proofing and getting it ready for the oven. So we'll see you shortly. So it has started the kneading segment. So notice how that paddle is pushing it up against the side of the pan, developing the gluten. So the kneading speed has really increased. Take a quick look. So you can see that the dough ball has um, all come together in one nice smooth ball and it's being hit pretty hard against the side of the pan. So we'll be back at the next step. The machine is going to buzz in just a minute as it finishes its cycle and we're going to open up the lid and take a look at it. It, it has just been through a rising cycle and then uh, we will take it out of the pan, put it right here, and then I will show you how to do the torpedo loaf. There it goes. So let's take a look. So there it is after its first rise. And so it's not hot. The pan is not hot. It's warm inside. But we're going to take this out. And we're just going to put it right here on this countertop. And it's a little bit sticky, as you can see from my hand. So I'm going to get some flour going here. Oh, I'm feeling <laughs> the paddle hiding inside the dough. So we'll remove the paddle. And the dough is nice and warm, very airy, full of gas. So we're going to degas it just a little bit. As we degas it, I'm going to form it into a square. Want to get all the bubbles out, if possible. Probably about an 8 inch, 10 inch square. I'm going to take one corner and move it to the center. Take the other corner, match that, and press down. And then starting from the top, for me, I'm just going to roll it toward me. Stretching just a little bit as we go. So this is going to be the hump in the middle. And then as we get out to the edges, and notice that I'm just kind of pulling the dough a little bit. Now with the seam on the downside, on the underside, I'm going to lay it right here in this pan. So this is not quite as smooth as I would like. I've only done this torpedo shape twice before, so I'm still learning the ins and outs, but this is not too bad. And I'm just going to cover it with this tea towel 
and we will let it double in size. Once it is double, we will slice it diagonally on the top um, about a quarter of an inch and brush it with egg wash and get it ready to put in the oven. Now, uh, Jim is gonna walk with us over to the oven. I've had that oven preheating already half an hour. The rocks are in two pans at the bottom. I decided to go with two pans. We'll see how that does. And so we'll take a look at the oven so that you can um, better visualize what's gonna happen when we put the um, bread in the oven. So here we go to the oven. I'm just going to give a quick peek because I don't want to lose a lot of the heat that's already there. So there are the rocks in the very bottom. So when it gets close to time to put this in the oven, I will turn the heat under the water and get the water boiling in my little tea kettle over here. And then we will pour some water in those pans, put the bread in, and cross our fingers for the next 20 minutes to hopefully get the crust and the color on the crust that we are looking for. So we will see you at that time. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of water right here. I need to redo that because I didn't take into consideration the steam would burn my hand, duh. And so I'm going to be safe this time. I have my heat glove on. I'm going to pull the rack out. And now I'm going to put water in the bottom. Now we're going to finish uh, the loaf by slicing it diagonally. And I'm using this serrated blade. Some people use a special knife to do this. Some people use a razor blade. I have found that this little serrated blade does a great job for me. And I only want these cuts about a fourth of an inch. In depth? In depth. And I'm doing them diagonal and parallel to each other. Now I'm going to give it an egg wash. Now, um, I've been doing a lot of egg washes lately and what I have found is, this is a little too thick, I'm gonna add water. What I have found is that I never use a whole egg. And so one of the things that you can do is freeze it in ice cube trays and then thaw it as you need to uh, use it. Uh, with eggs being as costly as they are, I don't want to waste any egg. This happens to be some of my freeze-dried egg powder that I have reconstituted to use as the egg wash. And it seems to be doing okay. It was a little thick there at first, and I may have thinned it down a little too thin, but I think it's going to work just fine. Looks like I'm still going to have some left over, so next time I do that, I used a tablespoon. Next time I will probably cut that amount down to maybe just a even a teaspoon or two and then add the water okay this is now ready to go into the oven you're going to put your sesame seeds on it oh yes jim reminded me to put some sesame seeds on it we like that and the egg wash, of course, will hold them in place. Just lightly. All right, I'm gonna move this over. I'm going to put the bread in first, and then I'm going to pull out the bottom tray and put water in that second tray. So, here we go, I have everything ready. So yes, there's lots of steam, which is good. Putting on my heat proof glove. And adding the boiling water. Okay, we did it. <laughs> All right, so 
uh, with the oven at 425, it should be done in about 20 minutes. I'm going to watch it closely and we'll bring you back when it's ready to come out of the oven. I can't wait to see how our, our experiment has turned out. So I just took the temperature of the bread. It's 105, which means that it is very done. And let's hope the crust is nice and crusty. So I'm going to put on my um, heat gloves and I'll bring it right over. Oh, 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 look how gorgeous that is. Woohoo! Oh, yes. Listen to that crust. Okay, actually, I'm going to take it off those pans and put it on the rack. And we will let this cool for a little while and then we'll come back and cut some and taste it and see if the crust stays crusty. Uh, some of the time what happens is because the loaf is now cooling, it's very steamy on the inside and that steam might soften the crust. So here's hoping that it doesn't, but oh, we have a nice crust right now. So let's hope it stays. So we'll see you in just a little while when this is ready to cut. Here it is, it's nice and cool, and our crust has softened, darn it. So the other thing that I could do to hold that crispy crust would be to cool it in the oven, except I have those stones in there, those, I have the lava rock in there that would continue to make steam, which would not be good anymore now that we're trying to harden up that crust. So I would need to pull those rocks out and then leave it in for a little while for it to um, harden and maybe stay hardened. We're gonna cut it anyway and taste it. It's still a nice crispy crust. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that. Be yeah, thank you. A beautiful crumb. Crusty on the outside, very soft in the middle. I'm just going to take a quick taste. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's wonderful. It is amazing to me what those four ingredients can turn into. The taste is beautiful. Every time I bite down, the, cr the crust is crunching under my teeth, so it still has a nice crunch to it. And um, the crumb is chewy, just like French bread should be. It is soft and light. This turned out absolutely great. Um, I really do like the dough program on this bread maker. I can use it for a lot of things. So far I've used it for pizza dough and for French bread, but there are a lot of other things that I can use it for just to mix the dough. It can take the place of a stand mixer. If a stand mixer is not in your budget, um, this is about a third or a fourth the cost of a good stand mixer. And so um, it, would, it would be a good alternative if you still want the taste of homemade bread but are not able to do the kneading. Um, I'm getting to the point where doing that kneading is harder and harder on me as well. So I'm relying on my stand mixer and on the bread mixer, bread maker, bread machine. <laughs> And so um, this was a wonderful success. And if you have a bread machine, I hope that you will try the French bread option. Um, if you don't have a program for that, just take the dough out right before the final rise. And that will work just the very same way as my machine that does just the just a dough sequence. <clears throat> so there are lots of um, opportunities, lots of variability that we can uh, do with a dough machine. Hope you enjoyed this. We're going to enjoy some French bread with um, uh, whatever. <laughs>
I can't make up my mind. There are so many options, but we're going to enjoy this French bread for lunch. So we will see you soon at our next video. And thank you so much for being with us.